A man plowed his own field, and now the U.S. Attorney's Office is trying to fine him $2.8 million. What the actual fuck? Thank you for joining me on the 40th episode of The Lava Spurt, Plowed by the Feds. This episode is brought to you by Praxis, where you can get a full-time job in nine months, making $50,000 a year with no college degree. Also brought to you by Rye Guys T-Shirts, the makers of all of the Pax Libertas Productions T-Shirts, including the T-Shirts for this show. A rye wit for today's shit. Welcome to The Lava Spurt, the weekly offshoot of The Lava Flow. Channeling the flow of information to the libertarian, anarcho-capitalist, voluntarist, and agorist community. Brought to you by my per episode donors. Thank you. Here's your host, Roger Paxton. A farmer faces trial in federal court this summer and a $2.8 million fine for failing to get a permit to plow his field and plant wheat in Tehama County. A lawyer for Duarte Nursery said the case is important because it could set a precedent requiring other farmers to obtain costly, time-consuming permits just to plow their own fields. Anthony Francois, a lawyer for the Pacific Legal Foundation, a libertarian-leaning nonprofit that fights for private property rights and limited government, said, quote, The case is the first time that we're aware of that says you need to get a U.S. Army Corps of Engineers permit to plow to grow crops. We're not going to produce much food under those kinds of regulations. No shit. However, U.S. District Judge Kimberly J. Mueller agreed with the Army Corps in a judgment issued in June a trial in which the U.S. Attorney's Office is asking for $2.8 million in civil penalties is set for August. The case began in 2012 when John Duarte, who owns Duarte Nursery near Modesto, California, bought 450 acres, about 10 miles south of Red Bluff. Duarte was planning to grow wheat on his own property. Imagine that. Look, guys, I'm sure you know that student loan debt is at a collective $1.4 trillion, with 25% of graduates still struggling to find meaningful employment. Instead of being just a statistic, you can choose to live life on your own terms and join the intellectually stimulating, collaborative community of Praxis. While getting a paid apprenticeship with a dynamic growing company, Praxis participants receive intensive professional development that they describe as freedom, empowerment, creativity, progress, achievement, inspiring, and challenging that leads directly to a full-time job. To learn more about how you can ignite your future with this fire-starting collaborative community of Praxis, go to discoverpraxis.com slash lava. Because the property has numerous swales and wetlands, Duarte hired a consulting firm to map out areas on the property that were not to be plowed because they were part of the drainage for Coyote and Chat Creeks and were considered waters of the United States. Francois conceded that some of the wetlands were plowed but not significantly damaged. He said the ground was plowed to a depth of about four to seven inches. Duarte's wheat was planted, but not harvested, because in February of 2013, the Army Corps of Engineers and the California Central Valley Regional Water Quality Control Board, Jesus, that's a mouthful, issued orders to stop work at the site. The agencies claimed Duarte had violated the Clean Water Act by not obtaining a permit to discharge dredged or fill material into seasonal wetlands considered waters of the United States. Duarte then sued the Army Corps and the state, alleging that they violated his constitutional right of due process by issuing the cease and desist orders without any sort of hearing. The U.S. Attorney's Office countersued Duarte Nursery to enforce the Clean Water Act violation. Bureaucrats doing what they want without any due process. Farmers plowing their fields are specifically exempted from the Clean Water Act rules forbidding discharging material in U.S. waters, Francois said. Duarte disturbed portions of the property that included wetlands areas, the U.S. Attorney alleges. But in addition to civil penalties, the U.S. Attorney's Office is also asking the judge to order Duarte to repair the damage to the wetlands, including smoothing out the soil and replanting native plants in the wetlands. He also may be required to purchase other wetlands to compensate for the alleged damage to the property south of Red Bluff, according to the government's proposed penalties. So not only are they trying to steal $2.8 million from this guy, they're trying to force him to buy other wetlands that he can't do anything with. This is disgusting. Francois said he thought the proposed penalties were unfair. Well, no shit. His client thought the plowing exemption allowed him to till the soil. 
Quote, a plain reading of the rules says you don't need a permit to do what he did, Francois says. How do you impose a multi-million dollar penalty on someone for thinking the law says what it says? Are you a free spirit with a skeptical mind and a mischievous sense of humor? Are you fed up with pointless wars, official lies, and the abuse of power? Does the Daily News leave you shaking your head? If so, meet the Rye Guys, makers of fun, gullibility-resistant t-shirts for independent thinkers. If you like to laugh and question everything, stop by RyeGuys.com today. That's W-R-Y-G-U-Y-S dot com. The Rye Guys, a rye wit for today's sh- Now, this is a clear-cut case of government overreach. Duarte purchased his property with his own money to do with as he chooses, and yet the government is trying to tell him that he can't, all because of some fucking shrimp. A fucking shrimp. This is just another way the government finds a way to control our everyday lives. And it's frankly the entire purpose, the raison d'etre of the Environmental Protection Agency and other government agencies just like it. This is further proof that Duarte and all of us don't actually own the land that we claim that we own. The government does. They can dictate to us exactly what we can, and more importantly, what we can't do to our own property. If you don't believe me, don't pay your property taxes on your land. Or try to build something on your land without the required inspections and permits and fees. You'll find out really quickly just how free you really are, and how much ownership you have over your own property. A case that hits really close to home for me is a development right here in Milton, New Hampshire, where my family lives. A company bought 90 acres of land in this area to build single-family, duplexes, and multifamily housing on their property. The town is going fucking nuts, starting with a lady literally making the not-in-my-backyard argument, because this property is behind hers and would, quote, ruin her view, I shit you not. If she wanted to keep that view, then she should have bought the 90 acres before the company did. Others are making the argument that additional housing in this area would cause overuse of government roads and government schools. But that sounds like a government problem to me. And this is a case for less government intervention, less government involvement, not more. I guarantee you the free market would quickly find a way to adapt to having more people living in the area and fill the needs quickly because somebody would be able to make some money off of it. But everyone is so used to government change happening at a snail's pace, so they can't even conceive of any other way of these issues being resolved. So the city government is poised to tell the private company that they cannot build what they want on their own private property. For shame. And this is just one of hundreds or thousands of examples around the country and around the world. When are we going to learn that government does not fix our problems? Government causes our problems. Sadly, we live in a world where it's easier to convince people to give half their salary to the government, send their kids to die in wars, and surrender their freedoms for false security than it is to convince people that it's possible for society to function without government. Until next time, keep striking the root. Thank you for listening to The Lava Flow at thelavaflow.com. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe now at thelavaflow.com forward slash subscribe. This has been a Pax Libertas Productions podcast.